doing an update. I've had some strong winds this morning. Um, I've replaced my 2000 watt with this 1000 watt uh, with the dynamic load resistors on it. Um, they cannot slow it down enough to stop it going over the voltage. So I've got like three ohms across the windings, if you like. Um, they just can't stop this unit tripping. It just this cannot absorb the uh, BNC turbine load, uh, even with my extra bits on the top. So um, I put another resistor on. I have this relay at the bottom here. This one was going directly across the capacitor inside the inverter to actually try and stop the inverter tripping. Uh, so when this enables, this enables as well at the same time. So I've got the AC load on and I've got the DC load on as well. But the DC load, it burned that out. Uh, it was sort of, uh, I put um, five ohms across it and it just burned out the dark components. So that's what it is. Not powerful enough, 40 amp I think it is that one. Uh, it just doesn't work. So well, I've got no trouble with this big one. But that one down there is a piece of shit. It's probably a fake. It uh, should have absorbed the load, no problem. Uh, I'll take you over to my other project. Yeah, so this is my other on the go project. This is where my two kilowatt inverter now is. It's hooked up to the solar panels on the roof. Uh, so it's 1.2 kilowatts and I've got an MPPT as well. This currently is not charging anything. It's all wired up. There's a Raspberry Pi at the bottom of it there. That's controlling when I actually turn my batteries on to the inverter. So this fantastic unit. I would highly recommend this unit. It's really really good. It's in uh, the mode just I don't know if you can see it not a little there's a little uh, lamp post on the right inside down here. And what that means is when it goes dark, this will actually enable this wire, which I'll screw into uh, which goes across to here, and then that goes up to the inverter. So as soon as it goes dark, this circuit puts power onto this relay, uh, but the relay doesn't switch on until my Pi tells it to. Uh, so what I do is I'll look for when I'm drawing over two and a half kilowatts from the grid. If I see more than 2.5 kilowatts, I then turn that relay on, and then this gives me another 1.3 kilowatts uh, from the batteries. So it's, uh, it stays on until the load from the grid drops below 1000 watts, and as soon as it does, it then switches this off and conserves the batteries in here. Uh, it does that all night until the next morning. So currently I am working with these four batteries. There's a nice meter there that I got, excellent device. Highly recommended, very very good. Um, these batteries, not recommended. These are got in Australia. They're marked as 135 ampere hours, but they're not. They're actually 75 ampere hours. Um, so I pulled one apart earlier to have a look inside of it um, because this one uh, was wasn't balancing as high as the other ones. So this one was a little bit lower. So I've charged this a bit extra so that it stays online. So I pulled it apart. Just to be very careful, you don't want to short it out. I had a look inside it, switch the lights on. And inside of here, you'll see um, that's come up again. Hang on a sec. Okay, so that light will dim off a bit. Hang on. Okay, alright, so inside of here, a nice controller board. Lots and lots of packing either side. What's that? What the hell's that this thing? We've got lots of packing either side. See then there? I'm trying to stop it. I mean, it's bright, it's coming up quite strong. But I've nothing, I've no problem with the BMS. The BMS seems to be fine. Um, so, what I'm going to do is, I am going to turn that off. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to turn off. Oh, that's better. I can see it better there. So I'm going to turn off this BMS that's inside of this one and add a 48 volt BMS to the whole system. So I'm going to rip all these batteries apart and make a nice big box with, well, it doesn't have to be that big does it because it's pretty shit what's inside of there, it's pretty small. I mean there's uh, probably a third of the space still free. Uh, so 
So I can't go sideways, so I have to replace with something. Good quality wires, either side, no problem with that. Good quality BMS, battery pack, piece of shit. It's not what it's supposed to be at all. Put that back on here, before I do some damage. Okay. And, um, yeah, so, like I say, still undergoing a uh, research phase. Um, but, uh, like I say, this unit, BSC 6048, definitely buy that that's a good one if you want the MPP tracker that's fantastic uh, it doesn't get too hot compared to this little piece of shit I may have shown you this before don't even think about buying one of those I cooked the garbage um, that's what it actually is it's just a piece of crap don't even bother the deal look at the connectors on it how small they are you can actually see it there it's actually melted that's supposed to be 60 amp and this is 60 amp 48 volt or 60 amp 24 or 12. look at the size of the connectors and there they're, those things are huge much much better okay yeah uh, turbine's going nuts let's go see what's going with it so let's turn my lights off so so the uh it sits like this on more or less all day uh -huh. But it's when the gusty winks come, it just gets so much power so quick. Just listen to the wind kick up. There you go, it's going again. And then you see it's got it's only got 46 volts on it. So why it should trip with 46 volts is beyond me. It's just the, all I can say is the inverter itself, this unit cannot respond fast enough it's doing something it shouldn't be doing it's releasing the load and my load resistors are all the years of now so my load resistors are keeping it below 60 volts so i know it's not my problem it's just the inverter itself that's just doing something weird shit I can hear the wind go up, see 51.5. So my resistors are still holding it in place. You see here, the LED is on. That one's screwed, but uh, I won't see that one. Uh, so what happens is, because it keeps it down, it then lets it come back on again. Normally, what would happen is this would never come back on again. With the dynamic load to keep the, keep the um, voltage down, it will not switch back on again. So that's the beauty of having the dynamic load. So I can either keep playing with it, add more load to try and stop that over voltage occurring. But um, it just seems that the inverter itself is the problem. So probably what it needs to do is uh, I know, a proper solar charger, two batteries like I've got over there on the solar panel, and then this thing you up to the batteries, and it just use the batteries as a big capacitor and then just get it out but uh, as a system in high winds it, this one isn't good enough the, the, full, the 2000 watt was a lot better in this location uh, but I think a 24 volt 2000 watt one may work better but I wouldn't guarantee it so I'll have to test one but, uh, currently I've spent enough money on this project so um, the only thing I'd probably prefer to do was uh, probably get get some batteries in the uh, open turbine uh, battery controller. Yeah, that's it.